Hi. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Kira and welcome back to my channel. I, uh, this is a video that is long, long overdue. Uh, if this video doesn't pertain to you, that's okay. If you want to keep watching, that's cool too. If not, you could stay for the art shit and the photography shit and whatever. Anyways, hello, my name is Kira. I am from New York. I recently moved to Florida. Everything's been hectic right now. Uh, I'm a photographer, I work in film, I do digital art, I do too much stuff, honestly. But that's a whole other, that's a whole other topic, that's a whole other conversation. Anyways, uh, if you couldn't tell by the title of this video, I am going to be talking about adoption. So in like 2016, 2018, whatever the fuck, um, I made a few videos about my experiences with transracial adoption, being adopted by white lesbians, um, being adopted by white people, but also being adopted by people of the LGBT community. You know, just some things regarding my experiences and just being adopted from a different country as a whole, being a different race than your parents. And it got a decent amount of traction for like a smaller channel. Like to this day, I think this video has like over 120,000 views. My other ones have a few thousand, which like, granted, like I know is not a lot, but for like a small person, that's a lot. So I was like, Ugh. obviously when you're, you know, like 16 or 17 and you're angry so and edgy, so you're making a YouTube video about it. You don't really understand that people, sorry, that's literally my cat moving my tripod. And yeah, when you make a YouTube video about stuff, you don't really understand that people can now perceive you. And I was like, that's lovely. But, uh, and at first I was actually really nervous about it. You know, I was nervous about people f knowing who I am. I did receive a lot of fucking negative comments. Gay, bad. I'm a good Christian mom and I'm against gays and whatever. And I'm like, whatever the fuck, like lady, shut the fuck up. You're the one who's like a middle-aged woman screaming at like a 16 year old on YouTube. But regardless, um, so yeah, I did receive a lot of backlash, but I want to talk about all the good things that I did receive from that video. Uh, to this day, 2021, I still receive comments, DMs, messages, emails, etc. from that video, from multiple videos back then, of other adoptees coming to me and being like, yeah, like your experiences, I relate to them. And you know, it's really nice being able to hear from someone who actually like understands what I'm going through and X, Y, and Z. So, because, and I honestly, honestly, I just received another one of those messages, a longer one today on my Instagram. And it kind of inspired me to talk about this topic again, because the reason why I've been so reluctant to talk about it, which is why the rest of my channel is like art and like other stuff, is because of all the backlash. But I'm kind of at a point in my life where I don't really give a fuck. So yeah, so we're going to talk about that today. The number one thing that you will get as an adopted person, especially like if you come from a country that, you know, or if you come from a poorer area in a country or whatever, regardless, you could even be adopted. You don't even have to be transracially adopted. You could be like, sorry, that's my cat if you hear background noises, but you could even be white within a white family or black within a black family, etc. But regardless, the number one thing that I feel like people always fucking tell me, or at least, okay, keep in mind, these are all my personal experiences. And if you relate to them, great. If not, that's okay too, because this is just my experience and I'm just sharing it with you guys. But regardless, the number one thing that I always get is people saying, oh, like your parents did such a good job with you. They did such a good job raising you. Aren't you grateful? You should be grateful. Like, oh, they, they, they open their hearts and their homes to you. You should be really grateful that they did all that for you. And I'm gonna explain why this is harmful and I'm gonna explain why, even though you may think, even though you may, even though you may think it's a compliment or you think you might be helping, especially if a adoptee is going through a hard time with, you know, their adoption and their, going through mental health issues or if they're just going through a lot it's not the most helpful and I'm gonna explain why so basically though when it comes down to it and I'm all about this when it comes to feelings and emotions and conflict and things in general and confrontation in general is validation 
validating for this. Validation is so important. And now he's on a plastic box. Lovely. Regardless, I'm just going to continue regardless. But um, validation is important. And the reason why it's important is because you're basically telling the other human being that, yes, I recognize your feelings and I'm listening and I'm taking them into account. Because, for example, if I'm expressing any form of discomfort or negative emotions or abandonment or, you know, any form of negative emotions regarding my adoption and someone comes up to me and is like, you should be grateful. It's very extremely invalidating. For the reason that we're not dumb. We, we are grateful and we know that we're, we should be grateful. It's not even, the, 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 what bothers us is not even the fact that you're saying it to us. It's the fact that, it's the word choice. It's the fact that the, the should. You're assume, making this assumption that we should be. And granted, three-fourths of the time, we are grateful. And we are very grateful to our parents, um, our adopted parents. And we are very like thankful for everything that they've done for us. But especially when we're going through a hard time, at least, when you, when a non- transracial adoptee or a non-adoptee in general says that to you, it's extremely invalidating. And the reason why that hurts us is because it's basically saying, oh, your feelings don't matter because you should be grateful. And that's why it's hurtful. And that's why it usually leads to conflict. People lash out, you know, the, the adoptee just feels even more isolated and feels more abandoned. Like, like no one's listening to me. No one cares about my feelings, you know? And like in general, as a human species, we should do that more, I think. And I think if we did that more as a, as a population, I think we would avoid conflict on so many levels because even, even what not as an adopt, not as an adoptee, a person, if a person is experiencing emotional distress and they come to you and the first thing you do is either give them advice or be like you should be grateful that's not the best thing you should say to someone especially if they're going through emotional crisis what you do is you sit down and you say to them in a non-condescending way like like oh my god like that that must be so fucking hard for you and like i'm really sorry that you're going through that you know, like, tell me more, like, tell me more about your experience because help me understand, you know, and like stuff like that. Obviously, the way I'm saying it sounds really condescending just because like, I'm kind of not heated, but like, I'm passionate about the topic right now. So I'm just kind of like saying it, but also, but no, in the moment, you need to validate their experience. You need to validate their feelings. And the reason why uh, adoptees hate it when you fucking tell them you should be grateful is because it's extremely invalidating to everything that we're feeling regarding our adoption, regarding abandonment, regarding the primal wound theory, regarding, you know, uh, having a harder time forming connections with people, um, being a different race than your parents. Oh my God. Like the amount of times as a child, we were stopped by cops because my, the cops literally thought my parents like kidnapped us. Or like the amount of times we would get weird looks in the grocery store, weird looks at the mall, like, you know, like my mom, my mom, who's a white woman, like walk around with like three little Asian girls or like whatever, you know? So like, ugh, it's just, it's extremely invalidating to say that, especially Especially when, you know, I'm not gonna, okay, because I, I originally wasn't gonna talk about this, but fuck it, I'm gonna talk about it. I know I'm gonna get backlash either way, so like, whatever. And I honestly, I this needs to be said, but regardless, um, in my opinion, it's a parent's job to take care of their fucking child. You signed up for this shit. Especially if you adopted a child. Like, you literally signed up for this shit. So, and, but obviously there's shitty people out there, obviously, especially boomers, like they don't, they fear what they don't understand. So then therefore they lash out. I also have a separate theory that boomers are children because they're not, they don't, they weren't taught how to regulate their emotions. So they just scream at us. But regardless, um, basically they don't, 
they, it's a parent's job to take care of their fucking child, especially when you're adopted. So when you say to us, oh, you should be grateful that you were adopted, it's kind of, it's demeaning in the sense that, you know, like, okay, like we're congratulating my parents for doing the bare minimum, like taking care of their child, which like, that's kind of how it feels. Granted, it's not always true in the sense that like, yes, I am very grateful to my adoptive parents. I know that they sacrificed and put a lot of, you know, blood, sweat and tears into raising me and my siblings. And I know that they did the best that they could. Did we have a rocky road and a bumpy road? Fuck yeah. Did we, uh, did we have the best relationship growing up? Fuck no, because I was a fucking shit teenager, but <laughs> that's what happens. But also like, it's good to be able to self reflect and recognize that these were the emotions that were happening and be able to fix it going forward in the future. But regardless, when a non adoptee or a non person involved in the family says to you, oh, you should be grateful that they adopted you, that they, they did all this good shit for you and that they like cared for you and loved you. And it's like, well, yeah, cause they signed up for it. What else do you want me to say? You know, so like, uh, that's another reason why it kind of bothers us when you say that kind of shit, because it's like, it's, it's, it's basically congratulating the bare minimum, which on one hand, yeah, it should be congratulated in the sense that, yeah, there are, sh a sh there's so many fucking shitty people out there. But on the other hand, it's like, that's like congratulating someone for using someone's correct pronouns. It's like, okay. You, you did the bare minimum, like congratulations. In conclusion, I don't know. I just wanted to really make this video because, or I, and if you guys want more videos like this about adoption and stuff, like, leave it in the comment section below or like, I don't know, send me a message or some shit. Um, because yeah, I, I like talking about this experience. I love hearing other people's experiences too. Uh, and other people's perspectives. And keep in mind, like I said, everything that I said and everything that I, will continue to say in these videos are all from my own perspective, my own like experiences. So if it doesn't relate to you or if you don't agree with it or whatever, like that's okay, that's totally okay. It's okay to have a different opinion. It's okay to have a different experience. We're all different people. So like I would never expect someone to have the same experiences as I do, you know? But regardless, I just share these videos because I want people to be able to know that they're not alone. And I want you to be able to feel like you are safe within your own community. And when they're, you're adopted, that's not a very big one. So we got to stick together. Because uh, like, you know, the, we get it. All the jokes. Oh, you look different than your parents. You must be adopted. Or like, oh, don't tell him he's adopted. When like, when the kid is different. And that makes us feel so shitty growing up because we know we're different especially if you're transracial adopted adopted meaning that you know your parents are a different race than you are um it is extremely hurtful in the sense that we know we're different our whole lives are different you know like my parents are my parents are lesbian they're white they're german italian english I am Chinese, so I don't know anything else, you know? I don't know anything but different, you know? So, like, when people make the jokes, when people, you know, say the mean things, it does get to you. I mean, obviously, you shouldn't let things get you down, but it is very hard when it's constant. It's in the media. It's in the movies and the books and the joke. It's, it's always there. You know, you know what I'm talking about when they're like, oh, they're adopted or, like, oh, I'm going to tell... I'm going to tell what to, you're adopted. And it's like, why is that a bad thing though? Even if they were adopted, why would that be a bad thing? You know, like, it's just, it basically signals out, or I mean, uh, it basically shows that you're different, but like it portrays it in a negative light, especially when you make the adoption jokes. And that's the part that we don't like. So, like I said, make whatever jokes you want because I'll be honest, I do. Like, I'm, I have a dark sense of humor. That's just who I am. But at the end of the day, though, just know, like, what the weight of your jokes are, if that makes any sense. Or, like, don't make the joke if you're not involved in that community or that whatever. Like, I don't make black people jokes because I'm not fucking black and it's extremely disrespectful. Will I make occasional Asian jokes or occasional adopted jokes with my friends that are also adopted or also Asian or also whatever? Or like, yeah, occasionally, yeah. Because guess what? 
we're human beings and we like humor. But still, regardless, um, it's just about knowing the weight of it because we don't know anything but being different. And then when you say something that portrays that difference in a negative light, it's extremely hurtful. And then when you tell us to be fucking grateful, it's extremely invalidating. And that's where a lot of conflict comes in. So in conclusion, I'm gonna end this video real soon. Don't worry, you can stop hearing me talk. But in conclusion, uh, please don't tell adoptive people that they should be grateful. Because at the end of the day, like, it do like yes, we know. We're not stupid. We are grateful. Um, because we do, a majority of us that are, do come from, you know, a poorer country or do come from a different area or whatever. We know that we definitely could have had a different outcome and a different life if we had not been adopted. But at the same time, when you say that to us, it's extremely demeaning and it's extremely condescending and it's extremely invalidating. So don't say that. Please, please, please. And honestly, I know for a fact I'm gonna get a slew of comments in, that, say, that are gonna say exactly that, but it's fine because the amount of people over the years that I have gotten sweet messages from make it worth it. So if you want more videos like this, leave a like and subscribe. I'll, uh, uh, leave them in the comment section below. Let me know what videos you want me to talk about next in regards to adoption, so.